Hey there, False Tube. It's Jessica, the Schoolhouse Stitcher, coming to you on this Sunday, June 9th. Yeah, the 9th. Um, since I last saw you in my Mania Plans video, I've been to the Prim Stitcher Society retreat. I've stitched a little and FFO'd a lot. So I have plenty of things to show you today. Um, we'll start off with my Blackbird Mania, aka BDSM products. Uh, for Blackbird Design Stitch Mania, we have an acronym problem. We know. Uh, I have a pile of stuff to show y'all. It literally extends from over here all the way around to over here. So I'm that. Which is surprising. I didn't think I would have that much because it has been a fairly busy month, a little over a month for me. Um, what has happened? So earlier in the year, um, I actually, brief break for a life update. We're going to be all over the place here. I can already tell. Um, but earlier this year, I was promoted from operations coordinator of our marketing to project manager of marketing. Um, I also handle our department's entire budget. So we've had some staff changes. Our fiscal year 20 budgets have been due. The fiscal year 19 budgets have been wrapping up. So that basically means that over the last month, I have been very, very busy with accounting and finances and coming up with different plans for project management and how I want things to flow through the department. Um, so that did mean that my mania plans were a little abbreviated instead of doing 10 projects. I think I ended up doing seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I did seven. Um, so the ones I did not work on, I didn't work on garden fair. Um, I did pull fabric for it and it's sitting on my coffee table. I just haven't started it. I didn't work on my um, my English garden sewing bag whip and I did not start the was it the honeysuckle pin keep it's the little round pin keep it was appropriate enough it was the screenshot of my mania video so it was just a little thing um, but I didn't start that either just because I ran out of time toward the end of toward the end of the month because that's when everything was becoming due like our budgets were due on the tw on the 31st so I just I didn't have time um, and this month is gonna be fairly busy too because it's the last month of our fiscal year so it's just, uh, um, but I still worked on things so I'm going to show you we'll start off with the blackbird designs projects so the first and let me say I'm pretty sure this is the order I worked in things on I didn't go back through Instagram or through my list to Hold the exact order that I started these so they may be a little off but you know they're, they're kind of close actually I think I did this hmm. see I can't even remember what is you know it doesn't matter we're just at some point near the beginning of mania I started first winds of autumn which is the giant strawberry that was part of the Dying to Stitch Ladies Prim Society. And this is stitched on 36 count vintage beeswax by r and It's the fabric that came in the kit. And there's dog fur on it. And I started with the bird in the middle. I think it goes this way. So, yeah, it's a strawberry. You can see how big this thing is based on the linen. It's huge. Um, but I just did... A little bit of his oh, a little bit of his wing I'm in a new spot today because I filmed in this spot before usually when it's cloudy because it gets better light um, and it's been cloudy and rainy all weekend in Atlanta but it's still we're still struggling but we'll get through it it'll be okay One of the other first projects I worked on was the Merry Christmas Pendrum 
also from Dying to Stitch, Ladies Perm Society. Uh, this one is stitched on, where is it? 36 Count Patriotic Brew by r and Reproductions. And I made a, which way did that go? That's the thing too, I haven't touched some of these in so long that I'm looking at them and I'm like, which way does that go? I think it goes this way. I just made a small start on the house that's at the top of the drum. And then, oh, I think I had a comment on the chart for this one. Let me make sure. If you're stitching this one, um, the only annoying thing about the chart is it doesn't it doesn't show the center. So you have to you have to count to find the center of your own. Also, the instructions for the band um, this band that goes around the side. Oh, sorry, glare. The band that goes around the side here are a little confusing because basically you're taking one motif and you're repeat. Um, it's one design that says Merry Christmas, and you're supposed to repeat it. Um, so you do once for the front and once for the back. and That's why I started with the top, because I was starting this at a retreat, and I was like, no. That's for home time. That's not for retreat time. The next one I started, and I do not have a picture of this because the picture was on the top of the tin. Um, but it's called Wild Garden. Um, it was one of their kits that came in a little tin, and it came with um, all the floss, it came with the fabric, and it came with a little uh, star-shaped um, button. But this is what I stitched so far. So it's gonna be a basket of these flowers with vines around it. Sorry. Maybe. It's just gloomy here. The light, uh, the light's not gonna be good. So this one, I pulled it out in preparation for my video, and I thought, that doesn't look centered. The design is centered. What happened? Well, downside to retreat stitching, when you had a, a Jack and Coke, is that, let's see, I believe it was, so this yellow one, I think, is the center of the chart, or in the center of the chart. Do you see what I did? This is the yellow one that's in the center of the chart. But for some reason, after I stitched it, I just started going a completely different direction. I have no idea why I did that. So instead of thinking that I stitched this one, I thought I stitched like the bottom one, but I did yeah. I don't know. I did count over and I do have enough. The needle is where the design will end. So it's pretty close, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to frame it. I'm probably going to turn it into a pillow or, um, a flat fold or something. So I will have enough because I just leave as long as I have like three quarters of an inch on the end, I'm good. And I think this is like an inch, so uh, it's kind of close, and I'm probably gonna take my sewing machine and zigzag so I don't lose any to fraying, but I can make it work. Which is good, because if I had to rip out all that stitching, well, I would not rip out all that stitching. I would just get a different piece of fabric, 
and start over. All right, I think the next one I started is Tis the Season Sewing Bag. Once again, Ladies Prim. Stitched on 36 count Blackbird Nest by r and Productions. And my whopping start is the Y and the N in Happy New Year. I told you, I didn't have a lot of time to work on some of these, so that they got started. That's a bonus. All right. Next up is a personal favorite. And if you watch Pam and Steph over at Just Keep Stitching, you'll see that Steph just finished this one. It is Easter Parade. It's the bunny. I will stitch the basket at some point, but right now we're doing the bunny. And this is stitched on 40 count Love Letter by Color and Cotton, which I got as part of their fabric club. And it goes this way. I, I think it goes this way. Yeah, we're good. I have stitched his ear, his ears. So the fabric's nice. It has a bit of, um, of course, the color is terrible and you can't see anything, but um, I'll try to post a picture on Instagram that has a better color. Uh, it's a nice, I don't really know how to describe it. It's just a nice, like a old, um, slightly yellowed um, letter, like an old pack of letters you might find, but not too yellow. Don't like fabric that's too yellow. All right, two more, two more from Blackbird Me. This one is the clustered stars, Just looks like this, and this is a pretty complicated, complex design. Um, not a, a super difficult stitch, but it just has a lot of parts to it. So this is just the front of the needle book. When you open it up, I don't think there's a color picture of this, uh, but when you open it up, then there is a sampler on the inside of the needle book, and then when you close it, there's a design on the back. So there are, like I said, a lot of parts. Um, here is the sampler that's inside. Do they have a picture of the back? Yes, they do. And that's what it looks like opened. So lots of pieces, and it's very important that you count properly um, because otherwise you're gonna really mess up your fabric. But I started my teeny, teeny, tiny start on the front cover. Woo! -hoo. Great progress, right? I think I started that one around Memorial Day just because I wanted something a little patriotic around that time. And the last one that I started is a personal favorite. I have wanted to start this ever since I got the chart and I can't believe it's taken me this long to get to it. It is Rose Hips and Ivy. I love this, love this, love this so much. And this one is stitched on.
36 count winner's brew by R&R. &R. And I have just done a little bit of that bird. Tiny start. I think I actually started this one the same day that I started um, Clustered Stars just because I actually had a little time to stitch that day and I knew that I had enough time to put in one length on each of them. And I'm like, I'm, I'm just not going to have time as we get further into the week. So, take it where you can get it. And that was my Blackbird Mania. Uh, I mean, pleased with the progress I made on that wild garden. Um, that one is probably going to, it might become a focus. Just because I think it'll be, it was stitching up really quickly and I think it'll be pretty easy to get done. Um, Rose Hips and Ivy and the, what was the other one? It floated right out of my head. Uh, oh, Easter Parade. So Wild Garden, Easter Parade, and Rose Hips and Ivy. Those are the three that I think they're stitching up the fastest or I am most looking forward to working on them. So they're probably going to float to the top of the um, float to the top of the whip pile and the others will be worked on as I have time. In the past couple months, I also had made time to go to the Hawk Run Hollow Stitch Along that's put on by um, a woman in a sampler guild. And while I was there, I had, so when you last saw this, I've finished the three across the top. When you last saw this, I was working on the one over here that goes under the first block. Um, I've done a little bit on that. You can, um, you can like barely see a stitch right there. Uh, so I do have some, it's, it's hidden by the Q-snap and it's so annoying to get this lined up. I just don't want to take it out. But I switched over to the middle block because it's words and it goes a little faster. It's easier to stitch on at the meeting. Um, so I'm probably, so maybe not quite 40% done with that block. Um, there's gonna be a row of trees and then some more trees and some more words. And I'm really just working on this one that one day a month when we have the Hawk Run Hollow stitch along. Um, it's, it hasn't been a focus piece for me. Um, I haven't been pulling it out and putting it on my stand while I'm at home. So it's not getting a lot of love lately. It's just, uh, just the one day a month. I think I said one day a week. It's one day a month at the Hawk Run Hollow stitch along. My last whip I have to show you is, that, so I kind of got on a finishing kick and I'm going to show you the things I finished and I'm going to show you the things I FFO'd, but part of my finishing kick was, um, well, as you can see, these are in different project bags than I normally use. I didn't count my project, blah, 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 project bags properly when I was doing the Blackbird Mania. So I ran out of project bags. So I was like, well, I could go get more at the container store, but it's been raining and I'd have to drive up there. And I don't like to drive up there because I don't, uh, traffic's horrible. Or I could finish some of my whips that are close to being finished and then I could repurpose those project bags. So that is what I did. So one of the things that I am almost finished with is Folk Eggs by Prairie Schooler. I'm working on this one. I could see myself doing these at some point, especially this one. I love that chicken. But I'm working on the bird. And this is how far I've gotten. And this is just from yesterday and today. Um, just focusing on yesterday and today. So before this, the only thing I had was this little turquoise diamond and the bird. Um, since yesterday, I've done everything else and the only things I have to do are finish this bird and do the white motifs 
that curl around here. And there are only one, two, three, four, six of those. So it shouldn't take very long. I should, I'm hoping I'll be able to finish this tonight. It depends on um, what chores I need to do before I go to bed. So maybe. And the other one, the other project bag I freed up was due to finishing, and I just realized I forgot to tuck in two threads. Whatever, I'll do it later. Be Happy by The Primitive Hair. Now I just, did, I did not do the entire design. I was going to, as you can tell by the, probably tell by the fabric, I was gonna do the whole design. But I got to stitching and I realized it has a, here's the whole design. I, mean, I got to stitching and I realized I don't really like that. That's not me. So, and I don't think I would have enough gold of the gold to finish it anyway. I really think you need two skeins if you're going to do this on, this is on a 30 count R&R. &R. Uh, I don't remember the color. It's probably like creme brulee or something like that because there was a stitch store near, uh, near here that went out of business years ago and I bought a ton of 30 count R&R &R at 75% off. So, but I love it. I'm planning to finish this as a, I saw someone who finished this as a flat fold and they had like a little strip. They had like, um, that's another reason I left out that thing. They had a, a, a coordinating fabric going down one side and a little strip of lace. It looks super cute. So I think I'm going to copy that idea. Now I will say if you are stitching this yourself or if you are planning to stitch this and if you have already stitched this and you have FFO'd it, I'm going to give you like a few seconds if it's going to bother you to hear about a mistake in the chart because I know it would bug the crap out of me and I would see it. It's something that once you see it, you can't unsee it. So if you have already FFO'd this, just skip forward like 60 seconds. I'll give you a second to find your remote, find your phone because trust me, if it were me and I had already made this, if I had stitched this and I didn't notice it and I had already made it into a flat fold and someone pointed out on a video, I would turn around in horror and start staring at it and it would drive me insane for the rest of my life. So just, you good? Okay. This wing is charted incorrectly and it's stitched incorrectly in the model. Do you see how they're nice and symmetrical here? Do you see that wing? The top two stitches are two stitches off. They should be over here, but instead they're over here. I had already stitched it like this and then I looked at it in my lap and I thought, that looks weird. And then I looked closer at the chart and then I realized what had happened. So if you are planning to stitch this or you are stitching this, watch out for the wing. Just make it match this one. Move the top two stitches, two stitches that way. Okay. We're back now. If you took a break to uh, to avoid hating your FFO, we're back. Everything's good. This is my finish. We're gonna move on now. Seriously, I would be um, I'd be so mad if I had, if I had not noticed that. Ugh. All right. This next one was I think it was pretty close to being finished when you last saw it, and I have since finished it and am in the process of FFOing it. This is of course October 31st, Blackbird Designs. Stitch, this is a kit. Um, it is out of print. You can occasionally find it in, um, some, in smaller cross stitch stores. Um, I haven't seen one lately, but you can still find out that you might just have to call around 
this bird is everything to me because it's holding, I'm going to call it a martini glass. Bird with a martini. Love it. Now, if you are stitching this with the floss, so it comes with um, the fabric, it comes with one skein of floss, and it comes with the chart. I ran out of floss on this. Now you can't tell it because fortunately I ran out, I very carefully planned my floss and where I was gonna stitch because I knew once I got to this lap, I did this motif last. I knew once I got here, I'm like, I'm gonna run out. I'm not gonna have enough floss. So I very carefully stitched this motif and I think there's like a little vine. There's like six stitches or something up here that I did not have enough to stitch with. And you're thinking, oh, six stitches. Just pull it out of your ort, your, um, you know, your ort jar or something. Surely you have enough of that. No, no, no. You don't understand. <laughs> My orts on this. Okay, so I use the, um, I don't leave a very long tail at the end or when I, um, when I start my thread, I don't use a very long tail. I maybe, it's like half an inch. I think that's size of my pinky. Um, with my pinky, not this way, that's too long. Uh, so I don't use a very long tail and I also will stitch to the very end. Like sometimes I have to make a loop of thread and like catch the end of my thread and pull it under because I don't, um, I don't have enough to use my needle to tie it off on the back. So I am really, really frugal with thread, especially over dyed threads. I don't waste anything. I dug through my ord box and all of my ords are like this big. So no, there was no way to get six stitches out of there. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're stitching this yourself, even if you're, um, I suspect the deal is that I do not carry my threads and that can use more floss. A little more floss, not a ton of floss, but enough to where it would be six stitches worth of floss. Um, so I suspect that they may have carried between like this motif and this motif, or you know, carry between the letters, or the numbers, or between these, or something. I suspect that on the model they probably carried their floss. And that allowed them to use a little, just that little bit less. Anyway, but you can't tell, and it's great. Um, I, as you, as I said, I am in the process of FFLing it, so I've already cut out all the pieces, and I really just need to get a very thin piece of like chipboard to put on the back of this that I can then draw the. Um, draw it tight around and then iron it uh, iron it flat to keep the the curved seam and it'll be ready to sew together that's that finish and the third finish I had was actually a start and finish um, I went to I've been really into thrift stores lately um, really into thrift stores really into estate sales so I've been going to God, I've been to dozens of Goodwills in the last month. It's been insane. Actually, speaking of Goodwill, I found, I finally found one of these. Um, I went to my, it was after my Hawk Run Hollow meetup, and one of the women at Hawk Run Hollow was like, oh, I've been to this Goodwill. They never have anything good. I, like, I didn't even know there's a Goodwill over there, so I'm going to go check it out. And I walk in, I turn a corner, and the first thing I see is one of these, the milk glass candy dishes that people use to hold their scissors. Now clearly I am not using mine to hold my scissors. I wanted it to hold my grandma's wooden spools of thread. But I finally found one. Found some great stuff. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen, I did a post of like my greatest hits um, of vintage stuff I found at thrift stores. Uh, and I've since found even more. It's a little problem, just a little one. But 
I came around a corner at one of the stores and there was a Mill Hill kit just laying on a shelf. Now, of course, I scoured the entire store because I thought, well, surely you can't just have one Mill Hill kit. Yeah, you can just have one Mill Hill kit in the entire Goodwill. But it was a kit from the 90s. It's an entirely beaded kit. It is a wreath ornament. So all of this is beads. No cross stitches. I really enjoyed this. I started it, I bought it on a Saturday and started and finished it on Sunday. Because it's so much easier than the ones that include cross stitches in them because what it does is it uses thread that's the same color as the back, as the, the perforated paper. So all you have to do is just follow the, the chart for the bead colors. You don't have to change your thread. So you could just look at it and you could go, okay, red, red, dark green, dark green, dark green, dark green, red, red. And just pick up the right bead and go, go, go. Um, you know, there was no having to tie off. There was no real, it wasn't as difficult to count because you didn't have to say like red, skip one, two, three, four, Red, 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 red. Just go across the whole road. It was so easy. And of course I used um, the leftover beads to make the hanger. And I know this is not totally centered on the ornament. Because if you totally centered it on the ornament, it hung like this or something. It was weird. So I had to decide, do I want it to not be totally centered or do I want to always look at it and have it be like, eep? We went with off center, clearly. So I mentioned I've been busy at work. Next thing I have to show are my lots of FFOs. Um, I have been busy at work, but I did, they're changing how we do vacation days. So instead of doing it by calendar year, you will earn vacation year, days by fiscal year. And our fiscal year is July to June. So in order to start everyone off on like the same page, they basically said, okay, like if you have any carryover days from 2018, you need to take those by June 30th. And you can take 12 and a half vacation days by June 30th. Like, okay, so I have to take 18 and a half days. And I heard about this toward the end of January. So I'm like, I have to take 18 and a half days in five months. Um, so I just took off a week, a random week in May. I said, I'm going to take off that week. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stay at home. I'm going to organize or clean out our office and organize stuff. It's going to be great. Well, I did that, and it didn't take me nearly as long as I thought it would. It took me two days instead of five days. I was like, what else am I going to do? Let's FFO some stuff. So I started looking through all my frames and things. And I'm trying to remember what order, roughly what order I did these in. I think it's this. Okay. So one of the first ones I did is I've been finding these really great square frames at the thrift store. Um, they look more expensive than they are. This is just a tabletop frame. Um, but I keep finding these that look, they look a lot more custom. They look a, a little nicer than your, um, than most off the shelf frames. So I found, I had this one in my stash and was looking for something to fit it and held it over this Lizzie Kate design, Happy Holidays. And I really liked how it looked. It was between this and a Halloween design, and this one actually ended up looking a little bit better in the frame. But, pro tip, because this frame has these tabs, you can swap it out. So what I'm gonna do, or what I think I'm gonna do, is lace up a, um, Halloween piece and keep it with my Halloween decorations and just pop it in the frame during Halloween. 
Halloween's over, goes back up on the shelf. Put the Christmas one in. And if you have one that will work for all year round in this frame, then I'll do that. And that way I can, instead of having three different frames, which are, you know, can take up a decent amount of space, especially when you only have like 11, 1200 square feet. Um, I'll just have one frame and I'll have three or two or three um, laced pieces, which are very, very thin. Like I could fit three laced pieces, probably take up about the same amount of space as this frame. So, third of the space. And the next ones I did, I think these are the next ones. You know what? I don't even remember. Doesn't matter the order anyway. Just matters the finishes. This is Summer House Stitch Works Pennsylvania Prim Friends. It came as a kit. Um, this was an exclusive for the Prim Stitcher Society retreat in Pennsylvania last year. Um, so it came with a hoop and the fabric and the threads. I stitched it in the hoop. So all I had to do was finish, find a way to finish it off. So what I did was I cut out a circle of fabric and um, drew it up. Um, basically I, I put a circle down the fabric, ran a running stitch around it, drew it tight, ironed it so it would hold the seam, um, took away the template that I had used to, uh, to help it hold its shape, and then hand stitched it to the fabric. So you can kind of see, if you get really close, you can see the whip stitches I used to hold it down to the fabric. Um, but you can't really see, it, it does a pretty good job of matching the fabric. And then I just grabbed a random ribbon from my stash and use that as the hanger. I also finished or FFO'd Plum Street's Mary One. This one, uh, I had the chart that came with the threads and the chenille trim. So I just had to provide the fabric I stitched on and then the backing fabric. Um, the fabric I stitched on, I can't remember the name of it exactly. Uh, I know it's by Dixie Sampler and it's 40 count. I can't remember the name, sorry. But I just turn it into this little pillow. I use this backing fabric, which I thought matched the, I thought it matched his coat and this dark red really well. It's like a, it's a flannel. And I'm super happy with how this came out. I love it. I think he's my favorite. The other set I did, this is, I was at our, the EGA's, uh, the Embroider, Embroiderers Guild of America. Uh, my local chapter is the Dogwood chapter and they have a stash sale every July. Last year I was looking through a bag um, that had, or I picked up a bag that had a little measure frame in it. It was super cute and I really wanted it. So I bought that. And while I was digging through it at home, I realized there was also a finished sampler in there. It was teeny. But I didn't like the way it looked in the frame, so I wanted to do something else with it. And for some reason, what my brain came up with was, that would be such a cute mattress pincushion. So I made it into a mattress pincushion. It's a little wonky. And you know what? It is a really cute mattress pin cushion. It was the most fiddly finish I have ever done in my life. Oh, the linen kept unraveling on me. Um, you think quarter inch seam allowances are enough, but they're really not, but you can't really make them bigger because this thing is not that big. Also, 
everyone's like, oh, you just make the little, that's a crap load of backstitch. And people, you have to backstitch an outline of the back. You have to backstitch an outline of the front. There's dog fur on it. You have to backstitch an outline of all four sides. Then you're supposed to cut them out. Then you're supposed to line up the backstitch and you're supposed to whip stitch through the backstitches. Well, let me tell you, when the back stitches are in dark navy blue, you can't really see those stitches. So I had no idea whether I was matching it up with the stitch that was directly across from it or the stitch that was like a little to the left. I have no idea. And then I get to the bottom and I get everything together and it's unraveling. Like the fabric is, it's a pretty stiff linen. So it is prone to unraveling, but it's probably like, my guess would be a Northern Cross linen. Um, it's pretty prone to unraveling. <sighs> Get to the bottom. I'm like, there is no way I can stitch this together. Like I can't tuck that under and make it all the way across. I can't stuff it because just stuffing it would tear off little threads. What the heck am I gonna do with this? Let me tell you what I did with it. I broke Jessica's number one rule of finishing, which is don't use glue on your finishes, and I got off the Eileen's tacky glue, and I got a Q-tip, and I sat there and went over the edge. Went... So I would stop that thing from fraying, because I did not have fray check, and there was no way I could sew over it, and it worked. So there's glue on this thing, but you know what? At that point, did not care. It was done. I'd probably try a mattress finish again. I would definitely try it differently. I would definitely not use navy blue thread to make my outline. Looks cute. So not worth it. <sighs> okay. It's adorable. It's going to go in a bowl or on a shelf somewhere and I'll look at it and eventually I won't remember the pain anymore. It'll be like how mothers always describe childbirth. It's like, after a while, you forget the pain or else you would never have another one. I don't know. I don't have kids. This is just what people tell me. <sighs> so someday, I might forget the pain and make another mattress pain cushion. But today is not that day. But after the mattress pain cushion, I needed a nice, fairly simple finish. So I found another nice square frame at the thrift store and I put in Little House Needleworks It's Snow Cold yeah which is one of their from their ornament series now it technically the chart has a little snowflake up here I didn't like the shape of the snowflake I meant to put in a charm I forgot I might put one in later I probably won't I'll probably just leave it you can't tell it's fine um, now this one I also want to make to use it as an interchangeable frame so this one has um, the ones that go up under the frame instead of being attached to the frame and going out of here they're attached to the backing and they go up into the frame so what you can do is you can buy these little things called picture frame buttons and it comes with a um, a screw and a tab and you screw them in here and into the frame and then you can hold this in from the outside because this is also just a little um, this is not actually attached uh, because the with the glass and the mat board and the fabric it's just a little bit too thick to allow these to go into the grooves um, so I'm going to need to do that anyway in order to, uh, I'm going to need to install the, the picture frame buttons on the outside in order to keep the backing from falling off. But that's probably also something you can do if you have a frame that, um, that hangs up on the wall. You just install like the little frame buttons around the outside of the backing and then you can just flip them over. Um, these are picture frame buttons. They're the little tabs that do like that. Um, 
So yeah, just a way you can make it interchangeable. Always looking to reuse and um, reduce my storage needs as much as possible. And the very last thing I FFO'd was Woolies Pinky by Stacy Nash Primitives. I stitched this in memory of my great grandmother who worked in a textile mill um, because the plant kind of reminded me of cotton. Yes, I know cotton does not actually look like that. I said it reminded me of cotton, not that it is cotton. I grew up in the country. I know what people, I know what cotton looks like. Um, but it reminded me of cotton. So that's why I stitched that for her. And I looked through my entire, um, our sampler guild meets in a quilt store. I looked through the entire quilt store looking for a complimentary backing fabric. And of course, it was on the very last row of fabric that I looked at. And they had this, which is not, it's kind of a modeled, um, green brown color it matches the uh the leaves the stems and this is stitched on 32 count charcoal i think by zweigart um with the called for floss and those are all my whips and finishes and ffs i got a surprising amount done for being so busy y'all i'm very pleased with that Okay, now to haul. We're already at 46 minutes. This is gonna be a long one. So, some of you may have seen this picture on Instagram. I got an email from, hang on. Water break. Um, I got an email from an online shop here in Georgia and they said that they were um, they were closing out their stock of lakeside linens because it's so difficult to get in touch um, to get in touch with the, the company now and to order more that they were just like we're just we're not gonna carry it anymore so what you see on our site is what we have left and once it's gone it's gone Wow and they had it at clearance prices so yeah I hopped right over there to get on that Thought, oh, maybe they'll have a few colors I'm looking for. Oh, they had a few colors. They had a fat half of vintage sand dune in 40 count. Beautiful color. And a fat half of pearl barley in 40 count. Pearl barley is one of my favorites. A fat half of 36 count maritime white. This one is really hard to show up on camera because it doesn't show, um, it just looks like regular white fabric from there, but it's really, really pretty. There was a fat quarter of 40 count meadow root. Now I have. A decent selection of 32 count meadow root and vintage meadow root in my stash. Um, I bought it from that shop that went out of business. The color though looks a lot more like the vintage sand dune than the meadow root. So I'm kind of wondering if either the dye lot changed drastically over time or mine was just mislabeled. Who knows? I got a 40 count, um, a fat quarter of pecan butter. And a fat quarter of 40 count vintage maple sugar. I told you, I cleaned up. I mean, Lakeside at clearance prices. I cannot be held responsible for anything I do there. They also had a fat eighth of 40 count vintage maple sugar. And a fat eighth of 40 count regular maple sugar which looks really, really similar to the vintage. I mean, sorry, Claire, but there's not a lot of difference. And then I went and checked out the dollar section of their site because yes, they have a dollar section 
and picked up Sanford Stocking Ornament by Abby Rose Designs. I actually canceled my Collar and Cotton fabric subscription for um, in, back in like March or something because I thought, well, instead of spending I don't know, $27 a month on a fabric that I'm probably going to like but I might not like, maybe I should just save my money and every two months I'll buy a fat half of Lakeside whenever I find one. Didn't mean to spend the whole year's budget in the first month, but what are you going to do? And then we have the charts. So first of all, let me show you my insanity. Yes. Queen of the May. Hands on design. Or not hands on design. Hands across the sea. It's been a long video, y'all. 50 minutes. This is insane. Um, it's huge. On 40 count, the design size is a little over 23 by inches by 24 inches. So enormous. The entire tree, the green, all French knots. Um, there's over one stitching, like the little man, the woman, all kinds of things down here that are over one. Um, there's some motifs up here that are over one. These flowers and some other pieces are freehand embroidery, which, okay, honestly, the French knots, chain stitch, I'm not afraid of, the, or um, is it chain or stem stitch? Stem stitch. Stem stitch, I'm not afraid of. Um, over one, not afraid of. French knots, I mean, they're not the most fun thing in the world, but not afraid of this. The thing that gets me is the freehand embroidery. Like, I just, I don't know. She does have, um, Nicola from Hands Across the Sea. She does have a, I know she has a video tutorial on her website that you can pay for. Um, so it's like a little, a little class on freehand embroidery. And I'm thinking I might do that. Just because I've never done it before. And I know you need to have practice pieces too. So I'm definitely going to have that. You know, I'm definitely going to practice on something else before I bust that out. But um, that's the only thing that is making me, eh, I don't know, um, but whatever, I can figure it out for sure. This next stash is the best kind of stash because it's free stash. Uh, so I had a gift card to 123stitch that I got for my birthday, and then I also, um, my optometrist is really good about giving me rebate forms whenever I buy my contacts. And the rebate forms are in the form of a Visa gift card. So I had a $30 birthday gift card. And then I had $55 Visa gift card. And I was like, I'm gonna use these at one, two, three stitch. So I had $85. My total, $84.98. Yes! I'm so proud. I got Blackbird Designs, ooh la la. Front and back. I love this. I want to stitch that one so bad. Love it. I got the bells on Christmas Day. And our lasting friendship. Which I was looking at this, I was thinking I was gonna do, um, that I'm gonna do this sampler, the main sampler, as 
kind of a tribute to the prim stitchers retreats that i've been to because i was looking i was like huh well i could put the women who always sit at my table like i could put our initials in here and in some of the blank spaces and that would be a great little reminder of all the prim stitchers retreats that we have been to together because I said ever since the Marietta retreat, I've sat at the table with the, the same group of ladies. So we've done God, four, four retreats together and we're gonna be going to Asheville next year. So it'll be five. Um, I got my dear hearts. I don't know why I put the stress on that word. My dear hearts, my dear hearts. Otherwise it just sounds like animal hearts which is creepy um i really i really got it for the, i like this i saw someone who did this and they changed the colors on it and i love that um because to be honest the red and greens are not doing it for me um but now that i've seen possibilities with color changes i could see myself stitching that but i really got it for this because i love that heart so much And finally, I got Betsy's stockings. They're so cute. Not shown, but to round off my purchase and get me up to the $84.98, um, I also bought a skein of like um, Anchor Black because I found that the Anchor, like whenever I use gift cards at one, two, three, um, or those prepaid Visa cards or anything, I always and almost always end up getting a skein of anchor floss to um, bump my purchase up as close to the limit as I can because um, I don't want to I don't want to go over the limit on my card, but I don't want to just leave money sitting there either. So I will carefully plan my purchases and get as close as I can. This is the closest I've been. Last time I think I had five cents left. This time two cents. I don't think I can do better than that, but I'll try. Okay. Next we have stash from the Prim Stitchers Retreat. And this is just chart and kit stash. This is not um, finishing items. Like I did buy some um, frames and like wooden, uh, you know, boards to, uh, to mount things on. Those are not included in here. Those have already been put away because during the uh, previously mentioned office organization project. But I left out my charts. So the first one, I bought this off of Friends. This is Plum Street's Earthly Treasures. Love that. These next three I bought at Stitchers in, um, Stitchers Inc. in Memphis. I got Kathy Schmidt's pen skip because I have seen this at like three different stores and I always looked at it and I finally thought you know what if you always look at it just buy it super cute I got Plum Street's love notes because I don't see this one often and finally I got um, 1786 practice sampler I'm not sure if that's like yes yeah, 1786 practice sampler by Milady's Needle which I really got because of the triangles at the bottom love this Then at the Merchant Mall, I picked up a couple things from Summer House Stitch Works. She always has a limited edition kit for the Prim Stitches Retreat. So this one was Memphis Lily. It is stitched using the Sulky threads. Sulky? No. Yes, Sulky. And it comes with the hoop and the fabric. I picked up you know, I'm not even going to try. 
embroidered heart. Just can't do it. I can't take away enough of my southern accent and replace it with a French accent when other people are around or when I'm on camera. Like if I'm by myself and no one's filming me, I could probably do it. On camera, uh-uh, it's just gonna get tongue tied. So we're not even gonna go there. Super cute, and I bought the finishing pack. That includes, um, she had the model, she had the model of this displayed and it was so cute. Um, I kept opening it up and looking at it and finally I was just like, just get it. They had a new designer, Honeycomb and Threads. Um, Kathy Tonelli. Kathy has attended the Prim Stitchers Retreat and been a part of Prim Stitchers Society on Facebook for many years. And she designed this beautiful Honey Bee and Blooms drum. And she also had it available as a pinwheel kit, but it comes with the threads and the backing fabric and the bottom fabric and the stitching fabric. So everything you need. Picked up two Willow Hill samplings. You can see a theme in my stitching lately. Busy Bee Sampler. They had the model of um, this one I think it was so cute. And Live Simply. Again, because the beehive. And finally, I was sitting at my table um, talking with my friends and table mates about Blackbird Designs. Um, and we got to talking about, somehow we got on the topic of their out of print charts and the booklets, the booklets that they have. And I mentioned that I was pretty sure that the only out of print booklet that I did not have was um, with needle and thread because I have the Christmas book, uh, Joy of Noel. I have Souvenirs of Summer. I have um, Stitcher's Journey, Peppermint and Holly, Honeysuckle Manor, and um, Tokens of Friendship. I think that's what it's called. Tokens of Affection, Tokens of Friendship, Tokens of Something. But I didn't have Whitney on Thread. Well, one of my table mates says, Oh, I think I have that one out in the car. Um, I was gonna give it away. Let me go look for it. I'll see if I have it. Thank you, Karen. Ah, I'm so happy. So this one has several designs in it. There is Bluebirds, Needles, and Pins. Victorian pens and needles. Tulip and star pen key. Be thou the rainbow. Simple harvest. I really like this. I don't, it's just. Is what it says. Simple. And where's the others? Let heaven and nature sing. Yeah. The pink house sewing box. My Quaker House. This has a lot of designs in it. Tis Halloween. And this is the last one. Friendship's Sheltering Vine, which I love. I was so thrilled to get this one. And then to top it off, when she brought it out, she goes, oh, I also have this one, which is uh, with my needle, which I also did not have. 
So I was just, I was super stoked to get those and add them to my Blackbird Designs collection of I will definitely stitch the Sunday charts, which is basically all of them. Okay, we're almost done. There's still more, but we're almost done. Well, after I got home from Prem Stitches Retreat, uh, so I don't know if any of you noticed, but right around the time of market, um, the Good Housewife's Etsy shop went on vacation, and then it didn't come back, and then it didn't come back, and it didn't come back. <laughs> and there were still some charts I wanted to purchase there, so I got a little panicked. I was like, please come back. I want your charts. I haven't yet bought everything. Well, she finally came back. Um, so I, I panicked and, and bought the rest of the charts that I wanted, which was 1809 Quaker Sampler, 1798 Quaker Sampler, and Birds in the Bower. And I now have every single chart from her Etsy store that I want. There are some that don't really, you know, don't really do it for me. But all the ones that I love, which, let's be honest, I think she has like 21 charts on her Etsy store. It's most of them. I now own. Whew. I also got, um, I'm a member of the, what's it called? Is it Kindred Spirits? Uh, Club Through Dying to Stitch, which is Plum Street Samplers and Heartstring Samplery. And they are doing uh, patriotic designs. So we got the... Flag Day at Twin Gables from Heartstring Samplery, which is the complete kit, so it comes with everything that you need. And my final purchases, uh, Teresa Kitten Stitcher had a, she had a brief, like one or two day sale on her website where you could get 25% off her reproduction sampler chart. Um, and I had planned on buying a couple of charts anyway because she sells charts by the sampler company at a better price than you can find them at any other shop I've seen. So I picked up Church on the Hill sampler. I saw this at the attic. They had stitched it um, over one on, I think, 40 count. And I loved it. It was super nice. But they didn't have the chart in stock. I got Country House Sampler because I love that red house and I love the vibrant colors on this. And these are all stitched in DMC too, so they're very, very useful. And finally, what I used my 25% off coupon for, the Fledisla Louisa Barney, my 1892. I love the flowers, I love the cow, I love the little house just everything about this. I love the muted colors on this. Now this is charted for um, Soie d'Alger and has quite the list, but it's also charted in DMC. So I'm probably gonna stitch it in DMC and if I find anything, uh, she did post a picture or she does have a picture. Um, this is, so this is the front of the sampler. This is what the back looks like. It's a very, very different colorway. Um, you know, some of this green is like, the grass is like Kelly green. Whereas you flip to the front and it's this beautiful muted, you know, more of a, a aqua color. So I want to stitch it in this palette. Now, I don't know if this is gonna look like this or if it's gonna look like this. But I'm gonna make it look like that. <laughs> Cause that's what I wanted. <laughs> I just may have to do a little, um, I just may have to pull out every single DMC on and look through until I find something I like. Okay, that just about wraps it up. One more thing to show you. And this was a, um, this was a, a loan from a um, very kind stitcher. So grateful for this. Uh, I 
well started now that I have finished my um, be happy and as soon as I finish the folk art egg and actually I take it back I have to find a gold thread that I really like for this um, but the silver needles um, a little help from our friend stitching circle had a kit by little house needleworks called the stitching bee and I saw this pop up on Instagram and I loved it. I loved it so much. I do something I never do, which is I posted a picture on Instagram. I said, does anybody have this? And will, will you please loan it to me? <laughs> I would be ever so grateful. And somebody replied and said, I would be happy to loan that to you. And so they stitched it and then they sent it to me. And they included the little bee, um, the little bee needle miner, which is so cute. Uh, it's over on, um, it's over on my, my stand right now, so I can't show that to you, but I love this so much. Now, I have I said I do have to find a gold for this, so I'm probably going to pick that up. Um, I think next week is when we have a guild meeting, um, so I'll, I'll look through their threads and see if I can find a gold that I like, because I want to stitch it in an overdive. I don't want to stitch it in DMC. Um, and then I'll start this. And I think it'll be a super quick stitch. Everyone I've seen has stitched up really, really fast. So that should be fun. All right. That is finally, finally everything I have to show you. I really need to start doing these every two weeks or so. So that I don't have like piles and piles of stuff. And because it's really hard to remember what all you've worked on over the past month. Especially if you start a lot of stuff. Um, like there were... Or if you went to a retreat, like there's some things I'm like, did I work on that? I really cannot remember if I put stitches into this or not. Uh, so I just kind of had to give it my best guess on something. Um, but yeah, really need to get, really need to do every two weeks instead of every four to six weeks. So, um, this coming month though will be fairly busy um, in, well the rest of June will be will be fairly busy because it's the end of our fiscal year, so I'm going to have budget stuff to do. Um, I am taking off a few days here and there to get to that, you know, 18 and a half days I said I had to take. Yeah, almost there. Uh, so I'm taking off a few days next week. I'm actually going to go up to South Carolina and babysit my niece one day um, while I'm off. So spend the day with her. Uh, she's, oh God, is she four or five? I think she's four. She's four. Whoops. Um, so I'll be spending the day with her, which, y'all, I'm 36. I don't have children. I don't plan to have children. I've never actually babysat before. So this could be interesting. Uh, my rule was, uh, for my, my brother, was um, I will watch your children as long as they are potty trained um they have like they can speak clearly and they're at, of an age where they can speak clearly enough you can understand most of the words that come out of their mouth um so they're not just talking to you you're like uh-huh uh-huh that's great uh so you have to be potty trained i have to be able to understand them they have to be reasonably capable of like they have to be old enough to be able to entertain themselves in a room by themselves if like I have to go to the bathroom or something because no so she meets all those requirements she meets all those requirements and they need a babysitter it's like okay I'll do it <laughs> so that could be that could be very interesting um I think it'll be fun there's always a chance it could be a complete disaster but I think it'll be fun because she loves her she loves her aunt Chaka so I'm going to be doing that. I am going to be going to, um, is it Franklin, Tennessee at the end of June to, uh, Katrina Lynn Boyd's retreat. Um, so that'll be a lot of fun. I've never been, I've never been to that one. I don't know anyone who goes to that one. Uh, well, I take it back. I know Jen, Jen Stitching Niche is, is going, um, but I don't know who other like regulars at that retreat would be. It's just, it was within driving distance of me, and I, it's like four hours, with, I think, maybe a little more, I don't know. Uh, but I just, I just wanted to do a couple of those weekend retreats this year, because they're pretty reasonably priced, um, and I figured that way I could meet 
a few more stitchers. And then up in July, we had the EGA stash sale again, which, um, yeah, should be lots of fun. So I might have it even, I might have an even bigger haul video then. Uh, but hopefully I'll be able, hopefully, let's say almost definitely, I'll be able to come in and film before then. So I won't have to catch you up on like, here is two months of stitching and two months of finishing and two much, months of FFOing. And here's a gigantic haul video because, oh my God, we would be here for two hours. We're already here for an hour and 15 minutes. So going to wrap it up. Go do some chores. Um, it was great talking with y'all again. I really enjoy showing you everything that I'm working on. I enjoy seeing everything that you're working on. Enjoy reading all your comments. I hope you have a great stitching time and I'll see you next time. Bye.